Okay, so our first question this week comes out of Mooresville, North Carolina, and this one is actually one of our recordings. So this one came in on our LCN tips line. Don't forget, you can call in and be on that one, 833-526-8477. If you want to be on the LCN tips line, it's 833-LCN-TIPS, 833-526-8477. I know you guys like my pronunciation there of North Carolina, and here we go. Hi, Alan. This is Tony in North Carolina. Uh, you've been helping me with Turf Type Tall Fescue. I'm in Mooresville, North Carolina, about 30 minutes from Charlotte. I have a question for you. Last year, I was using the Heritage G, and then I would alternate that with the Eagle because uh, I have a real bad pro- had a real bad problem with rust, fungus. My question to you is I saw the Bulletproof plan and went and priced it all out. I bought the the Scott's Disease X and the Bio Advanced Fungus both in the granular form. And I wanted to see, because I'm on a budget, if it's okay if I just alternate between the two. So this month, do the Scott's Disease X. Next month, do the Bio Advanced Fungus Control. And then, you know, obviously back and forth, except uh, applying at the higher rate instead of the lower rate. Any help you could give would be great, and thanks for everything you do. Totally love all the information. Lawn's looking great. I've got some neighbors that are using some of the companies that you've mentioned, and uh, they've been watching me do it all myself. And to be honest, uh, my lawn seems like it's looking better than theirs. So thanks again. Talk to you soon. I love it, Tony. You hear that? Tony's like, yeah, man. See, he's got that little spirit of competition going there, and I love that because that's motivating him to get better and better. So these are great questions, and what Tony's talking about is my bulletproof disease or bulletproof fungus strategy, bulletproof fungicide strategy for lawns. I, I, I still don't know how to get the name right, but basically it's my strategy to prevent disease in your lawn. And the main one that I've talked about is brown patch, and brown patch is one. It's Rhizoctonia is the the root, I guess, the that's the real name, the technical name, Rhizoctonia, Rhizoc. All the cool kids go, yeah, man, we're watching out for the Rhizoc in our lawns. We've got to get out and get ahead of the Rhizoc. So people talk about it that way, but that's what brown patch is. And brown patch for me is something I'm going to watch out for definitely in my zoysia, my empire zoysia, all zoysia, not just empire. You want to watch the the fungus there. You want to watch for brown patch in that as we're going into seasonal transitions, as well as turf type tall fescue, highly susceptible, and St. Augustine grass as well. Now, centipede can get it. There are a couple others. You know, I don't want to get too hung around the axle on it. If you go to my website, thelawncarenut.com, and you sign up for my email newsletter, we'll send you out a whole bunch of different information that goes through this, but I did basically a three-part series on it, including from this podcast, as well as my YouTube channel has a video on it, and then we did an email blast, and we talked all about it, and that's what Tony is referencing here, is my bulletproof strategy to prevent fungus in the lawn. Now, he's talking about specifically rust, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but the first thing is, let me just review the bulletproof strategy with you in case you're new here, in case you're somebody that's been reading, watching, listening. I'll go with with some repetition as the key to learning here, and we'll go over it again. So leading into seasonal transition times, times when the disease triangle can all come together. It's like three legs of a stool. The stool won't stand up until all three legs are in the proper position. The first leg of the stool being your turf grass, which is called the host. Your turf grass is always present, so that leg of the stool is always screwed in and ready to go. The second one then would be the actual pathogen or the disease itself, spores in this case, for rust. And rust spores will stay over winter, so it's not like something that goes away. If you had it last year, you'll probably have it again this year if symptoms persist. So that's always there. And that third leg then would be the environment. The environment has to be right. And typically when I talk about the environment, we're going to talk about moist. We're going to talk about some cloud cover. We're going to talk about some moisture around. We're definitely talking about humidity on the rise, and we're definitely talking about a heat transition. Now, it can sometimes be from heat down into cold, and then sometimes it could be from cooler up into heat, but there's always some humidity in there. That's the environment. When those three legs of that stool come together, the disease will manifest. So what you want to do is get your fungicide down prior to that happening. So as conditions favor disease, because remember, the pathogen's always there, especially in the case of rust, and your host is always there because that's your turf grass. If the conditions start to come in, then you know you need to prevent 
And so you want to put that down. So basically, it's as seasonal transition is happening and as humidity is rising, and definitely over outside of Charlotte, North Carolina, it is definitely getting some more humidity over there. All right, sorry if I use that bad accent there. So the bulletproof tra strategy then says we're going to use two different modes of action fungicides to prevent the disease. Now, again, I talk about brown patch. We're going to go on rust here in a minute. But here in the spring, you would definitely put down for brown patch, you'd put down the first application, which is Disease X, Scott's Disease X, active ingredient, Zoxystrobin. And then right on top of that, secondly, you would put down Propiconazole, which is a group three fungicide, and that's a bio-advanced product. So it's two different modes of action fungicides that you're putting down prior to the brown patch or the Rhizoc coming online or becoming or manifesting itself or right as conditions allow for it to do that. So last year when I started describing this strategy, we were using what I'm calling professionally formulated products and I'm just using air quotes here. And what those were was a product called Heritage G, which is a, an azoxystrobin fungicide, it's, it's a granular. And then we were also using Eagle or Propiconazole, which were just concentrates, liquid concentrates, also fungicides, both class threes. And you'd mix those up in a hand can and spray them. That was the, that was the way we did it. Now that offered you a lot of flexibility and things like that. It also meant though that you might've had to buy a little bit more. You might've had to store some things, this and this and that. So this year I was able to find that same strategy through Scott's Disease X in a bag that covers 5,000 square feet for one application. And then a hose in sprayer on the Bio Advanced that covers one application spray. It's 32 ounces covered. 5,000 square feet. So basically it's a one, one and done. You buy one of each and you're good. Then you're, you're out of it. You don't have anything left over. You don't have to store anything, nothing like that. And it's convenient. You can go and get it right now. That was the other reason I went to the buy stuff at the store model of the strategy of the bulletproof strategy was because I wanted you to be able to go right to the store and get it right now. And both those products are available anywhere, everywhere, all over the U.S. So that's why I changed the strategy up. And then apparently Tony here's weighed out his options and decided to go with that strategy this year. But remember, I was more focusing on brown patch at that time. Now he's got a specific here and, and his question was about switching them up and this and that, but he's got a specific here and it's on rust. Now, if you go into YouTube and you search how to get rid of rust disease in the lawn, you will find a video I did a couple years ago. It was funny because I was living back at my St. Petersburg house back then on how to prevent rust disease in the lawn or how to get rid of it. And so I'm actually going to talk specific now to rust disease, which can happen anytime through the spring, remain through the summer, rage in the fall. You know, rust can kind of be that kind of, again, through those seasonal transitions, it'll kind of hang out a little bit through the summer and then push again in the fall, things like that. So rust can be really tough, especially in an area like you're in in Mooresville there, there's a lot of humidity that can rage in and out and you are getting passing thunderstorms, things like that. So if you're going after rust specifically, understand that that is a disease of the leaf. That is a disease of the grass leaf and the spores and the pustules hang on the leaves. And what happens is as you disturb those pustules, they burst, more spores go around and the disease can spread. This is why when you do have rust disease, we tell you to make sure you're catching your clippings and disposing of them, washing your shoes, washing your equipment so you don't spread it to other areas of the lawn. It's also about airflow. And when you do you know, water, you want to make sure you water deep and infrequent. You want to water only in the mornings because everything's up on the leaf. And so with that, then I'm actually going to change this strategy up and I'm not going to recommend the bulletproof strategy for you on this, Tony. I'm going to recommend that if you still have that Eagle left, stay with that because that's an excellent product. Or if you have the Propiconazole, you can use that or you can use both of those. They're both a group three insecticide, so they're going to work the same way. You're not getting any kind of extra benefit of using one or the other. So use what you have is what I'm saying. Use up what you have so you don't have to store anything. But I would recommend you use those because those are delivered in a liquid form. And that liquid is gonna coat the leaf where the actual rust fungus resides. And that's what you want. You want it to stick to that. If you use the granular zoxystrobin, it does have some efficacy and it's on the label, but it's gotta go up through the roots. It's gotta, it's gotta be systemically, you know, so I recommend instead go with the liquid version and the Eagle, the Propiconazole, which you can call Banner Max, or you can get the Bio Advanced product are all available in liquids and just hose that lawn down according to label directions. That's how I recommend you do it with the rust disease or the rust fungus, and you can start that, again, as soon as conditions become favorable. Now, the product that I was looking at said you could do it every 14 days, and I can't remember the max amount of times. Was it 11 times a year? You could do it. Now, I never thought that anyone would need to apply 11 times a year, and you should read the label on the product that you have because they're all going to be a little bit different, and I'm quoting a label from my memory here. But either way, I remember that propiconazole being, I thought, 11 times every 14 to 28 days. So you got a lot of leeway, leeway there with that product, 
And that's probably the best way to cure up your rust disease. And again, I would work on extra airflow in there. You may even want to cut a little bit shorter in the summer if your grass can handle it to increase that airflow. And then the third thing you want to do is push the lawn to grow. Think of it like just a bad hair job. Like if you're, if you had a bad hair dye job and you want it to grow out, what do you want to do? If you could take some sort of vitamin that would push the bad hair dye out faster, you would. And what you do with your lawn is you shot it with nitrogen. That's what you want to do. So whatever kind of nitrogen you can find, the 700 green effect would work great for this. Spoon it on there, you know, every couple of weeks, bing, bing, bing. And then also maybe some 1801 green punch, go with liquid, just push it on those, on that grass, you know, just these little shots of nitrogen to get it to grow through. If you do that, you know, keep everything keen clean keep the tools clean keep it from spreading as much as you can keep the airflow going push it with nitrogen and then hit it with that propiconazole according to label directions i bet you can push that disease right out of there pretty quick this season and as always make sure you hope for the best tony